joined ColodokiRaw.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. And today I'm actually all the way in British Columbia, Canada. I'm here in Vernon at the cool farmer's market they got here. And the episode today is because I want everybody that goes to farmer's markets, right, to own one of these tools. This is actually called the refractometer or bricks meter. This is the most important tool if you shop at farmer's markets or even if you shop at grocery stores. Now you may get some really funny looks if you're being all nerdy and geeky like I am now. And, uh, but you know, if everybody had one of these, in my opinion, there'd be a lot higher food quality or produce quality, fruit quality, vegetable quality, if everybody had one of these. Because here's the thing, from what I've seen, you know, if you go to the grocery store and try to buy some of the stone fruits that I'll be sharing with you guys today, peaches, apricots, cherries, right? Like people buy the ones at the grocery store, they think they're good. Like to me, most of the stuff at the grocery store is like terrible. It's really low quality because they have to pick it early. They have to ship it. It's in under refrigeration, especially with some of the stone fruits that could get like cold damage. The texture is ruined. It's just no longer the same. But people think what they buy at the store is good quality, but it's really not too good. So what the bricks meter does, if you're not familiar with how good a quality of fruit is, the bricks meter gives you a tool to measure the quality if you don't have a good reference range. You know, I've been eating fruits and vegetables in mass abundance now for the last 23 years, so I'm, my taste buds are pretty attuned because I know, you know, the best apricot I tr tree I ever ate apricots of was actually in like uh, Fresno, California. And I was standing under the apricot tree, they were dropping on the ground, rotting, and they were so sweet and juicy. And, and that's like, I'm still trying to match that because store-bought apricots are usually horrible. Anyways, this tool is the device you need to know if it's good or if a fruit is good or not, and it's actually called a bricks meter. And it works on re refracting light. So you put a little bit of the juice of the crop, whether that's garlic, you want to juice it, whether you want to drip some cherry juice on there, peaches, um, anything, you could put it on there. Then you're just going to look it up at the light. And uh, in there, you guys probably can't see. I don't know if the camera probably can't see inside there. But basically, you're seeing a a, ra a scale. It's like a graph. Maybe we'll throw it up on the screen what it looks like. And it goes from zero to 32. And that's the bricks. Now, people in the grape industry or wine industry would just use this to like measure the sugar content. And when the grapes reach a certain content, then they could pick them to ferment them into alcohol because it's the sugar that is what turns into alcohol. But uh, the bricks actually tells a lot more than just the sugar content. So here on this chart, it says, uh, Within a given species of plant, the crop with a higher refractive index will have a higher sugar content, higher mineral content, higher protein content, and greater specific gravity or density. This adds up to a sweeter tasting, more minerally nutritious food with lower nitrate and water content, lower freezing point, and better storage attributes. So that basically means it's going to taste better and it's going to be healthy for you. So on the back of this chart, I base, there's like a little um, comparison of uh, grocery store green beans and garden beans. And the bricks on the grocery store is 4.2, the garden beans are 6.1. And the interesting thing is, well, the taste was garbage on the grocery store ones. The garden beans taste was decent. And that's cool, you know, hey, taste is very important, but I'm really eating for nutrition. I want you guys to eat high antioxidant foods. And you know, every mouthful of food that you eat is an opportunity or it's a lost opportunity. For example, you know, if you're like my brother, he still eats at, you know, fast food restaurants and gets a hamburger. You're eating a hamburger, great. My brother probably loves the hamburgers, but now that hamburger is an is age-promoting food. It's gonna age you faster, cause disease faster, in my opinion, and I, you, he has the opportunity to eat something healthier. So hey, something healthier than a hamburger could be some strawberries, right? But you know, and that'd be great for my brother if he just ate strawberries instead of the hamburger, but for me, I don't wanna eat the strawberries. I wanna eat the best quality strawberries uh, you know, that even have more nutrition. So for example, with these green beans, if you just bought them from the grocery store, even though they're the same exact thing, or you grew them yourself, you know, you can look on this chart here, the protein is almost, but not quite double. You know, the calcium is double for sure. Um, the potassium is over double. There's at least some measurable amounts of copper in the, in the uh, garden beans, whereas there's basically no copper in the grocery store. And something that vegans can be deficient in is zinc. In the grocery store, green beans, there's very little zinc and there's over twice as much zinc in the good, good grown garden beans. So, you know, literally you become mineral deficient by eating conventionally raised produce. Even if it's organic at the store, it doesn't mean it's high quality. They're just following 
the organic guidelines. So this is the tool you really need to maximize your nutrition, to make sure you're getting the most nutrition in your food. So anyways, um, farmers may not like this so much today, but I'm gonna go around the farmer's market and we're gonna get some cherries and I'm gonna basically uh, sample the cherry juice on here and I'm gonna take readings to see who has the best cherries. The best cherries may or may not be grown organically, right? The bricks will depend on the variety of the cherry, which I'm just testing random cherries, so not, they're not always gonna be the same variety. Um, it also could depend on when they're harvested, right? If they're harvested riper, they're generally gonna be sweeter, and if they're harvested unripe, they're not gonna be sweet, but then also what's dependent on the bricks is actually how is the soil? What, what are they adding to the soil to create fertility in the soil so that the tree could make all its nutrition and throw those into the cherries today? And so that's what I really teach on growingyourgreens.com is how to make the right soil conditions to grow the highest quality food. And it's, it's a multi-step approach. It's by you know, honoring the value of the soil, honoring the microbes, make, making a soil rich in microbes, adding trace minerals in the soil, adding fungal dominated compost in the soil, and there's a whole bunch of things you need to do. It's not hard, but unfortunately, most farmers that are growing, they're not growing to grow high quality food. They're just growing to make a profit, to stay in business so they can just keep growing and keep living uh, their lives. So, uh, but luckily, some farmers are pay more attention to these things and try to do a little bit better job. And so that's what I'm gonna try to share with you guys today. So uh, let's come on and check out the farmer's market and uh, let's taste some cherries. All right, so now I got a sample from Gamble Farms here, and this is the first cherry I'll be trying. Um, this is basically a sweetheart variety, so it's very important if you're, you gotta compare apples to apples. You can't compare a sweetheart cherry to like a, a Rainier or a Bing, because the, the bricks is gonna be different. In this video, I'm just sharing all the different, you know, varieties, whatever they're actually have, having to be growing. And so I just uh, talked to the farmer about the growing practices, so basically, they grow the trees and they, they, they add very little fertilizer. They have actually good fertility practices. So uh, let's see how their cherries rate. So how this works is you're just going to basically break this open. And it's going to be kind of juicy. And then you're going to open this guy up and then just drop a couple drips of juice on here. You're going to put the lens down. And if you're here to look into the... Um, refractometer here you could wow this is impressive so today I had a cherry that was like uh, at a fruit festival that I'm at <laughs> had a cherry oh well, I tested a cherry that was like 19 and actually this one's testing out at about uh, 24 so that's the number that it's reading so like how do we know what a 24 means we got to get our chart out here And then uh, they have a standardized chart here for basically, um, you know, what cherries would be. So, for example, on cherries, if it's a, if it's a six, it's poor. <laughs> if it's an eight, it's average. If it's a fourteen, it's good. If it's a sixteen, it's excellent. And what did I say this was? I said this is a twenty-four. <laughs> so twenty-four is significantly higher than sixteen. So that's actually above excellent fruit by basically. You know, picking them ripe, having a good variety, and uh, you know, in, in this case, this farm probably has some really good soil. Although I will say, I was in um, Utah a few weeks ago, and I had 30 um, cherries that were 30. So, but 24, that's still quite excellent. So, although that bricks was really high on this cherry, you know, this is not an organic cherry, right? This was actually sprayed. So, I, I just, I, I don't like to eat normally like non-organic cherries. But I want to let you guys know this, if you can't get organic cherries, and sometimes organic cherries will be lower bricks than non-organic ones, I mean, non-organic cherries are still way healthier than most things you guys are probably putting in your body. You know, processed foods, junk foods, anything in packages, cherries, even if they're not organic, are still way better than most anything else you guys are eating. So, <laughs> eat up. <laughs> So now I'm here at Sprawl and Sons Farm and they are actually an organic cherry grower. They also grow other stone fruits and I had a nice chat with the farmer and uh, basically to add fertility because they are certified organic. They don't spray chemicals on their produce, which is a big problem. I normally I would not like to eat chemicals on the fruit, but you know, once again, it depends where you guys are at in your life. You guys can't afford organic cherries. You know, that could be $5 a pound and non-organic ones are a dollar a pound. You could eat more cherries because of that and eat less processed foods, junk foods, and animal foods. Definitely a good thing. I prefer to eat actually organic whenever possible. 
and will actually avoid non-organic produce items because that's just kind of where I'm at. Um, anyways, they have a good organic practices. They're um, adding uh, composted manures for fertility. In addition, they are also boiler feeding with kelp, which is a seaweed, which will add trace minerals and also give special, basically, plant hormones to help the plant grow. So hopefully these uh, bricks out pretty good. Let's go ahead and check it. And these are really nice and juicy and really nice, rich, deep color, which is also another uh, factor in the cherries. They're also a lot softer. Uh, some conventional growers may be like adding sprays that might firm their cherries up. So, oh, wow. So this one, wow, this one's only testing out at like 15 and a half. So uh, according to the Bricks meter, this is not a very good cherry, although it actually hasn't been sprayed and doused with chemicals. Okay, so the next uh, cherry I'll be testing today is actually called the Lapin cherry. That's the variety. There's so many varieties of cherries, and it's most people know like Bing's, but no, nothing else. And this is a uh, Salve Colonna fresh fruit. And oh, so the growing practices here are they basically use like a standard synthetic fertilizer, you know, a couple times, uh, you know, every season. So let's go ahead and uh, check this out. Squeeze off some juice there. She nice and dark. I really want to encourage you guys to eat dark fruits such as uh, cherries, even the tart cherries. Um, you know, they're rich in anthocyanins, which are anti-aging, could help with blood pressure and, and weight and all this kind of stuff. So, wow, this is impressive. This fruit is measuring about 24 and a half. So actually, um, you know, so once again, it's the growing practices plus how ripe they are, plus the variety. Hmm, that's a sweet one. So now I got a cherry from Sunshine Orchards, and this is a Skeena variety. So once again, you got to compare apples to apples. Skeena versus Skeena, Rainier versus Rainier, Bing versus Bing. Anyways, uh, the fertility practice at this farm is basically they may spray it because they're not uh, organic, so they spray chemicals on there. But uh, they don't use any fertilizer because they say they have good fertile soil. So let's see how this cherry rates. So to me, this taste is like really... Like, this is, compared to other cherries, this is like eating nothing. <laughs> oh my God, and looking at this, this is actually 13. So what is 13? Like, this is actually fairly low. I think this is the lowest cherry so far. So I mean, while some, in some cases, you might have good soil fertility if you do nothing. In most cases, it's probably better to add some kind of fertility uh, to your soil. So now I'm gonna test a cherry from KM Orchard. And one of the things I like about these cherries is that they're nice and dark. So one of the factors, you know, and there's many, is I want you guys to pick the darkest, deepest colored cherries. You're gonna have more anthocyanins. That doesn't necessarily mean they're gonna be high bricks, right? But so you should take all these factors into consideration. So we're at KM Orchards, and actually they don't know the fertility practices, uh, you know, that they add fertility to the soil. They do know that these are uh, sprayed, so they're uh, definitely uh, conventional. And uh, these are Lapin uh, variety. And uh, so let's go ahead and uh, check the bricks. Nice and fairly juicy there. Uh, good flavor, actually. I kind of like the flavor on that. Definitely better than the last one I had. Oh, wow. And so this one's right at around 23. So this is actually above excellent as well. How do you know that? What's up? So now I'm here at Awesome Orchards, and hopefully they also have awesome cherries. <laughs> and uh, these are actually uh, Lapin cherries, so that seems to be a fairly common variety. I think some of the other Lapins here have been fairly good, so hopefully they're no different here. These are actually, a, this is a really nice, dark, large cherry, nice and deep and juicy, hopefully. Uh, they're not organic, they do spray uh, for worms. Um, and then for the fertility to the soil, what they do is they, they'll, be, they'll add They'll add bag uh, fertilizer and also some compost. So that could be a good, you know, kind of halfway point, but let's uh, check the cherry. Nice, deep, rich color. I like that a lot. Nice and juicy. And let, let's see, uh, see what we read. All right, that's definitely good. Uh, 21, basically. And uh, remind you guys, 16 is excellent, 21 is above excellent. Mm, that's a good cherry. 
so now they got a cherry from a Winfield farm and they basically use bag fertilizer. You know, some people that work at the uh, you know farmer's market don't exactly know the growing practice, so I really appreciate when I'm talking actually to the farmer instead of maybe somebody that doesn't know everything. Um, these are not organic and these are lapins. So uh, let's take a look. These are nice and firm actually. Um, the flavor is pretty flat to me, but we'll see how these bricks out. Oh my God. It's actually like uh, 24. So yeah, actually these are quite good. Maybe I didn't get a good bite earlier. <laughs> but that's a quite good cherry. All right, so this is pretty much the end of the market. Places are closing up. I think there's like maybe two or three farms that I didn't get to hit that actually had cherries earlier, but we got here a little bit late today. Uh, what do we learn about bricks testing, right? So what you guys learned is that bricks is an excellent tool for, to help you determine the best, most nutritious quality fruit. And it can, it can be, the, the bricks number can vary, you know, because the organic one, which I would hope, and they're doing good practices to the soil, um, you know, uh, should have been higher in my opinion, but it, but it wasn't for whatever reason. And I don't, I don't know exactly why. I mean, probably part of that was the actual variety. But you should factor in uh, bricks when buying your fruit. Also, you know, use your taste buds. If something tastes better for you, um, generally that's gonna have more nutrition than one that doesn't taste as good. But bricks is only one, like, criteria that you should have because another criteria should be, is this farmer hurting the earth or is he rebuilding the earth? Is he helping the soil? Is he hurting the soil? Is he spraying toxins onto the food that then you will then be ingesting, even though it has a high bricks number, right? For me personally, and you guys could make your own decisions on this, I'd rather have a lower bricks fruit that still tasted good, but they were doing the right things to the earth and they didn't put the toxins on the fruit, right? I don't, I don't want any kind of like, you know, synthetic pesticides on there because, you know, the, the pesticides are meant for the bugs and in low quantities in us, maybe they don't do anything, but I believe that they could accumulate over time and cause really big problems. But if you're drinking hamburgers, if you're eating hamburgers and drinking Cokes anyways, once again, conventional cherries are totally great. So do the, do the best you guys can. I mean, I would probably almost, almost, maybe not totally, rather eat like conventional high bricks cherries like some of the ones I had here, the highest ones, instead of even organic imported bananas, right? <laughs> so figure that one out. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much, I think, the end of this episode. I think overall I would say that the Vernon Farmer's Market here had some really high quality fruit. I was quite impressed because there's been some farmer's markets I've even been to in California that actually had lower quality stuff, but they all bricked out pretty much pretty good, maybe except one or two farms. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed this episode learning more about the bricks, um, please be sure to give me a thumbs up. Also be sure to leave your questions and comments down below. I'll be sure, I'll try to answer them if I can. I usually do that for a few days after the video has been originally published. Also be sure to click that subscribe button right down below and make sure you click the little bell notification so you get notified when I put out my new and upcoming episodes every five to seven days on this YouTube channel. And be sure to check my past episodes. My past episodes are a wealth of knowledge. Over 500 episodes at this time teach you guys all aspects on how you guys can eat more healthy fruits and vegetables so you can be uh, live in great health. So uh, with that, my name is John Kohler with OKRaw.com. We'll see you next time. And until then, remember, keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables. They're always the best.